Hey guys, today I want to show you how I make my treasure scatter terrain. There are a few videos that exist out there today that show you how to make these bases in a similar fashion, but I'm going to show you the materials that I used uh, and how easy it is. And I'm going to kind of go step by step without actually creating it. What I've done is I've created the steps out so I could show you what they look like in a few simple steps. And in no time at all, you can have your adventurers raiding vaults, fighting dragons to get some treasure, and um, they make great, excellent pieces uh, to your terrain collection. So let's jump in. What I have here are all of the materials that I use to make that terrain piece. So obviously starting with one of the most important components you're going to need, I have the glitter. Um, this particular glitter, uh, the fragments of it are, are very large, and um, they're actually in scale with about 28 to 32 millimeter models so it it works out very well the downside of course is uh you've got to use glitter and this stuff is tough to get rid of if you spill it if it gets on anything um, so use it sparingly do what i did take an old box put it in the box before you sprinkle everything on that way you can just throw the box out when you're done and call it there <clears throat> i took uh, a scrap piece of foam. I had a couple pieces of foam. I always have some of this pink foam on hand that I get from the um, hardware shops. And um, this time around, I actually didn't use the Proxon wire cutter. I realize not everybody out there is going to have a Proxon wire cutter. Um, this is something you can easily accomplish just as fast using just a regular utility blade. So this is what I use to actually cut the foam out. Um, once I've cut it, you want to have it on a stable base of some sort. So I use a very thin MDF board. You can buy these things in stacks um, and they're pretty thin. They also cut around the edges very easily with a utility blade. So what I'll do is um, I will put links to as much of this stuff as possible down below in the comments. Um, so definitely check it out. If there's something in here you don't have that you feel you need, um, check out the links below. So you can use either something like this thicker MDF board or a cardboard chipboard, which is this larger square I have down here. Um, I prefer the thinner MDF board because it's more stable, doesn't really have any flex to it. It's not too heavy, but does add a little bit of weight to your pieces and pieces just feel a lot better when they're a little bit more solid. Uh, of course, I've got my mixture of Mod Podge and black paint, which helps me coat and seal the model, get it ready to be primed. Um, an optional step that you don't have to deploy is uh, gold primer. So in any areas that end up going bald, you don't need to worry about there being some kind of black underlayer. It'll be a gold underlayer. You can use any kind of glue that you want. So I use just Mod Podge. I've got a ton of this stuff laying around. Um, you can use tacky glue, any Elmer's glue, whatever. But this is what you're going to brush on all over your foam piece once it's on its board before you put on your glitter. The tacky glue will mostly be used for the decoration elements where you're gonna put the gems on, the jewels on, um, things other than the coins. You don't want your treasure chest hoard looking like it's just a pile of coins. It, it lacks imagination. Now, before you end up putting on any of the good stuff, the jewels, the gems, treasure chests, any kind of small elements. Um, before you actually glue any of this stuff on, what I'm gonna recommend is um, you cover the glitter part with all of this um, polyacrylic um, finisher. Get it in a gloss, it does come in a, in a matte as well, but you're going to want to get this uh, in a clear gloss. It's gonna do two things. One, it's going to seal your piece, keep it nice and shiny, but more importantly, it's gonna keep your glitter from flaking all over the place. I have one piece here that I haven't put this on yet, um, just to kind of show you the process that I'm doing, and uh, it'll probably get some glitter all over the place, but I'll deal with that. Uh, in any craft store or Amazon or anywhere, I'll, I'll have a link again to some of this stuff, um, just for ideas. You can buy these plastic jewelry beads. Um, they're in the shape of gems. And then you can get some of the other stuff like I've accumulated over the years. 
various glass gems. They have the flat silver side um, on them. You just dab the glue on, stick them down, and no one will be the wiser that it's a half size gem. Um, if you really want to step it up and get some good shine going, you can buy some of these glass Swarovski style ones. Wait for them to go on sale. Wait till you can get a coupon on them. Um, like, like it shows, these are six bucks US. Um, they were on sale when I picked them up for like three bucks, so it, it worked out pretty well. Um, and you can visit the jewelry section again to get some shiny little bits from the beads, necklaces, pearls. These can be whatever you want. I got these little silver ones because they kind of look like crowns to me. Uh, and then this gold one here looks like a goblet. Um, a company out there called Secret Weapon makes all kinds of paints and uh, resin components. And um, I actually have a little bag of them that are primed and ready to go. Um, they are treasure chests, little gold bags of coins that I use on this piece. And you can kind of see, they actually do come with coins on them, but to be consistent with the piece, I slapped a little bit of glue on top of those, and then I put a little bit more glitter on top so it would give it a more consistent appearance. So I'm just gonna lay out here um, the couple of stages that I used when creating these pieces. The first thing that I did was I took some of my pink foam that I had and uh, I, I'd save a lot of the scraps. Um, this stuff is pretty cheap. They come in uh, a three foot by three foot square for about $5. Um, but anytime I get big chunks that are left over, it's still very usable for other small things. So I throw it in a big box that I have and um, I can use them for projects like this. So just using utility blade, you're gonna basically cut down and get some oblong shapes. I mean, you know, it's a pile of coins, right? So it's going to kind of arc out and look kind of like a little flat mountain. Um, so start it out like this. Once you carve it down, you're gonna get something that looks uh, a little bit more like this. So uh, what you wanna do once you've kind of gotten a form and a shape and you want it to be as flat and consistent uh, as possible so you don't have too much space underneath, uh, you're going to want to use your chipboard or your MDF board and give it a base. So what I did already is I cut this out of MDF. I used the same utility blade and you're just gonna use tacky glue and glue it down into place like this. So now you've got, you'll have a nice solid piece. It'll be a nice good base for it. And uh, it, it should work out pretty well. After this has been done, I'm gonna use that Mod Podge paint mixture and I'm going to seal the whole piece. You don't really need to put it on the MDF, but there's no harm in doing it. For sake of speed and consistency, I just kind of take it and I brush it on as quickly and conveniently as possible after everything dries and then you have this solid piece. One thing that I will say is you may want to go over this a few times, maybe give it about two coats or so to make sure that it goes over everything and seals so your foam won't melt too much when you go to spray on your primer. It won't matter too much in an instance like this because you're going to be covering it with glitter. Uh, because you're covering it with the glitter, you're going to cover all the blemishes and it just tends to work out. So now that you've gotten the black paint on, this is what a piece looks like after it's just been primed. I put on the, the Retributor Armor from Citadel Spray. You can use any gold primer that you have. Heck, because you put on the black coat, you don't even have to use a primer. You can use a brush on gold. Um, you don't have to worry about this being too consistently sprayed. Again, it's just to have an underlayer in case you end up with a couple of bald spots from your coins. Um, it won't make too much of a difference. All right. The next step is where things will get a little bit messy. Now this is where you're going to start brushing on Mod Podge or PVC glue, whatever you've got. Cover all the angles. Um, you'll see one thing that I've done when I cut all my pieces is I beveled around the edges. Doesn't matter if you get any glue on there and some of the glitter gets on there, that's fine. I just like it because it gives a nice flat edge when it sits on my table. So now I've covered this whole piece in glue and all I did is I dropped this in an old box that I had laying around, uh, brush it up with glue and then I just started dumping the glitter on top of it to get this nice consistent covering uh, as best I could with all of the coins. 
You could stop here if you're content with just having the coins. It looks pretty good. Um, you are going to want to, again, use some polycrylic or whatever sealer you have that keeps it nice and uh, glossed um, to prevent this from getting all over the place because it, it will, I mean, it's going to. And this piece hasn't been sealed yet, um, so it will definitely get some glitter all over. Um, the last stage, again, using all of the little bits and pieces, and I actually used some Fire Slayer components that I have from Games Workshop, threw in a shield, a weapon, a sword. So you can use leftover bits that you've got from your other miniature builds, paint them up, throw them in here, and all of a sudden they're part of the treasure pile. So once it's all said and done, I've got a nice looking gold treasure pile. This is gonna go really, really well um, in the vault scenery that I'm building. I'm hoping to have that video up to you guys next weekend along with a few other videos since it's a holiday week. Um, but this is uh, the start of a massive treasure. Is the treasure real? Are your players going to be surprised when they get in this vault and they're just surrounded by a Scrooge McDuck proportion of gold? Uh, well, there might be some other things lying in wait, but I'll let you as the game masters decide how you're going to play that out. And that's really all there is to it. You can obviously go through all of these steps and you could potentially skip this priming it gold. Um, that way you don't see any black underneath your piece. But when it's all said and done, you're gonna have a very solid piece to bring to your table. And it breaks up the monotony of just having caves and stone and dungeon tiles. It adds a little bit more flavor to your table. And it's super cheap to make. I mean, if I were to do the math on this between the Mod Podge, the glitter, the primer, the tacky glue, the, honestly, the most expensive components were probably the little crystals that I ended up buying from Swarovski because they're a little bit shinier. Um, but I can make dozens more of these with the components that I have. Um, so these probably cost me maybe a couple of dollars each uh, when it's all said and done. If I can maximize and make even more of these, I mean, I can have them under like, you know, maybe a buck or two for each mountain of gold that I want to produce for my table. Thanks again, guys, for checking out my video. I hope that you found it very useful and it's something that you can bring to your tabletop games. If you have any questions or comments, let me know what you think down in the comments section down below. As always, I try to put all of the links where you can find most of these supplies in the uh, description down below. The ones that link to Amazon are Amazon affiliate links, so I do make a small commission on whatever is purchased through those links. Uh, so if you see something that you don't have that you want to add in, definitely check it out through one of my links down below. 100% of everything that is purchased through Amazon in my links goes right back into creating terrain. Um, so thank you guys again. If there's questions that you have, comments, please also check us out on miniaturemarauder.com. I have write-ups on all of the video tutorials that I do. And as always, happy crafting, and we'll see you next time.